everyone from your hand. Okay. So requesting everyone to turn on your camera, but make sure that your mic is on the mute, even if you're not turning on your camera, that is more important. So all right, it's 11 o'clock, uh, 11 one, and we can start. Uh, good morning, everyone. It is a great honor and privilege for us to rejoin again. This brings back memory of COVID time and some months after that, wherein we had a robust learning experience of Vidya Knowledge Series. And thanks to Rashmiji Management and everyone at Vidya Family, we are again starting the great Vidya Knowledge Series. And today we have an amazing speaker. Before I come to the introduction of the speaker, I need to do some housekeeping announcement, which I'm repeating since we joined in 20 minutes ago, that is requesting all of you to turn on your cameras please keep your mic on the mute and when you ask your question please turn on your mic and ask your question and once you ask your question again before uh, our guest speaker answers your question requesting you to turn off your mic that is very very important second in the uh, meantime if you have any other questions you can definitely drop that uh, question in the chat box or even after that if you have any questions you can uh, definitely reach out to the respective program leaders who would be happy to take your question to doctor uh, our speaker here and uh, uh, yes uh, it is my great honor and privilege to introduce dr vivek mansingh ji who is a speaker for today's webinar Dr. Man Singh Ji is a mentor par excellence and he has a pursuit of mentoring millions. Can you imagine that? I was speaking to Rashmi Ji yesterday and Rashmi Ji was saying that out of this million, thousands of uh, leaders should be coming from Vidya. And that's why we have this session today. And so let me tell you, out of the 200 books you have gifted us, many of our youth have read it and have celebrated that book. And that's why they are so excited to ask questions which they have after reading the book uh, you have written, which has really transformed the lives of millions around the world. Uh, Dr. Man Singh is a global leader, entrepreneur, author, technology visionary, innovator, and international speaker, along with he's also a philanthropist. His, his mentoring strategies have helped thousands of people around the world. He is listed as national who's who of the US, has received Chanakya Leadership Award and IT Man of the Year 2016 from Enterprise Connect USA. Now, without taking more time, I would request Dr. Man Singh to enlighten us on the Leadership Sutras and much more, potentially finding the full potential of me, which is his book. Thank you so much, Dr. Vivek Man Singh, for joining us. Floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Ankit. Let me just share my screen. Uh, and it is, you can see it, let me know. All right. Can you see it? Yes, sir, we can. All right. So let me begin. Um, uh, so thank you, first of all, Vidya India for inviting me. Thanks to Rashmi Ji, Shok Ji. Um, it is always a pleasure to talk to students and to all the wonderful students and other people who are joining me today. Thank you so much. Um, Ankit has introduced me already, but I'll show you some of the pictures from my journey, which is the chapter one of the book. Uh, first point I want to make is I'm a small point, a small town in the medium person who, who studied at Government Intermediate College, Fatehpur, very small city in UP. And we were sitting in on the ground up to grade 10. So I come from that background, Hindi speaking, a small town, and went on to do Queen's University, uh, to do PhD at Queen's University and uh, Executive MBA at Stanford University. So uh, for all the students who come from less privileged background, I want to assure you that there's no barrier to how far you can go other than your thought process. I've done three startups. Uh, I was president of Dell, Cisco, and now partner in Venture Capital Fund. The pictures you see here are uh, on the top left is David Packard and Bill Hewlett, uh, who started HP. Uh, then on the, the top right is Michael Dell. Bottom left is John Chambers. Uh, bottom right is Steve Jobs, as you know, and the 
picture you see on the right hand side is uh, a poster given to me by Steve Jobs, which says Vivek and team couldn't have done without you signed Steve Jobs. So I, a Fatehpur boy, Hindi medium boy, got a chance to work with David Packard, Michael Dell, John Chambers and Steve Jobs. There, there is no upside. There's no reason why you can cannot dream and go as far as you would like. So this is my professional life. Um, uh, written two technology books, six U.S. patents, invented the instrument picture that you see on the top right corner. Many, many awards, uh, including the ones that Ankit pointed out, uh, who's who of United States and um, IT person of the year for, for India. Uh, as Ankit said, I'm a philanthropist. I built a hospital in the name of my mother. I built an eye hospital in the name of my father. And um, we have helped 300 um, handicapped children walk like us who were walking like animals earlier. Um, and then we also have a school for underprivileged. So that's my life in pictures and in a nutshell. Now, what I want to talk to you about today is five things a student should do to achieve amazing success, right? This is all based on my book, Achieving Meaningful Success, Unleash the Power of Me. Uh, that Ankit talked about, but I want to focus on five things for students because this talk is largely for students, although other people will also learn some good things here. So number one, what should students do? First, have a mentor. Mentor can be your teachers, can be family members, can be senior students, but every person irrespective of any age and so on, not just for students, even for teachers, I will tell you, have a mentor, right? So it's very important because only when you have a mentor, you can also mentor other people very well. So the number one ask from students is have a mentor. What do mentors do? In a nutshell, they help you define who you aspire to be and then help you become that person. So it's mentor's role to talk to a person, a mentee, and help them think big and aspire big and capture those things uh, as their goals and then help them become that person. That's what the mentors do. Now, very hard to find mentors who are trained, who know the structured process of mentoring and who, um, who are sort of understanding this whole process. And that is why I wrote this book called Achieving Meaningful Success, Unleash the Power of Me. Many of you have had a chance to read that book. Congratulations. Uh, the book acts as a lifetime mentor. It is a national bestseller. And this is probably the only book that acts as your mentor. So it becomes your mentor. It guides you through various stages of your life and helps you hold your hand throughout this mentoring process, right? So the book's purpose is to replace a mentor in case you don't have access to them. Or even if you have access to a mentor like your teacher or somebody else, uh, still you will be uh, getting a lot of value out of this book. So there are many yeah, 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 yeah. in your institution. So please take benefit of that, right? The book has been praised by phenomenal people. You all know Sachin Tendulkar, Narayan Murthy, John Chambers, uh, many, many other people. Uh, there are 70 plus reviews on Amazon. If you want to see how people have learned from the book, you can go and read that. But um, it has been well, well appreciated by uh, everyone. Number two ask from students is to capture aspirations as goals. Right? Number one was to have a mentor. And with the help of a mentor, either a person or a book, Number two ask is to capture your aspirations as goal, right? Now, today, if you drive anywhere, you first open Google Map. Your parents or your, your cousins, whoever uh, you are driving with, they open the Google Map first. And when you uh, open a Google Map, it asks for destination before it can guide you. So for a small drive or ride, you have a destination in mind and Google Map can help you. But for life, many, many people actually do not have a destination. And that's a mistake, right? So one of the most important role of mentor is to help mentees aspire big and capture their aspirations as goals, right? 
many many examples i can give you dhoni for example um as you know many of you may have seen the movie dhoni uh, he was a, a ticket collector at kharagpur railway station but he dreamt of playing cricket for india and he did dr devi shetty um from very early childhood he was inspired by a, a doctor who did heart surgery and then he dreamt of doing that in india right many other people whom you do not know but i know have aspired big and went on to achieve that so the second step is to actually capture your aspiration as goals make sure you write it down it's very important the study done at yale university which shows that people who have uh, who have written their goals have 80% higher chance of achieving those goals all the pictures you see here are people who have who had big dreams right if you haven't seen the the, the movie uh, 12 fail please do uh, see it it's very inspiring story on how uh, this boy uh, wants to be in civil services wants to become an ias and it it shows his journey so see that and getting inspired by these people think big and capture your goals as uh, in writing right the biggest question in a student's mind at this point and this is important for teachers to also understand how to pick your long term professional goals because that will decide what education you need right so very big dilemma for students and it's a dilemma for even senior people but i am focusing on students right now uh, how to pick your long term professional goals so there are three methods that have worked for me i have mentored lots of people uh, lots of students um is first step is to go through your inspirers and role models is there some person that inspires you so much that you want to be that person right like i told you the story of dr devi shetty some of you may know him some of you may not know him but he has established a narayan hridayalay the heart hospital across india and he has helped god knows millions of people who had heart ailments right so he his story which you can go and see on my website uh, is that when he was in fifth grade or sixth grade or something like that he read a news that in south africa some doctor did an open heart surgery many many years back and that inspired him to become who he is so i think number one way to select your long term professional uh, career uh, is to actually see if you are inspired by somebody right who can be your role models your seniors your uh, your alumni members your teacher professor family members people you read about all of them can be your role models right i gave you the example of dr devi shetty i'll also give you my example i was inspired by my uncle who was a professor of physics at delhi university and that encouraged me to do higher studies and become who i have become so number one think through and see who you are inspired by and who are your role models and use that to select your long term professional career and goals right number two method for uh, selecting long term goal is through interest and talent uh, this is all described very well in uh, in the book so i am not going to go in detail but it is basically based on interest and talent i think somebody's microphone is not switched off so that is why it's creating so much noise please switch it off uh, ankit you may be able to identify and help that person uh, yes you... sir we are looking into it sir yeah okay so now coming back so there are four circles you can see here the first top left circle is um what what areas are you interested in right the second circle is um which areas you are talented in third circle is skills that the world values and fourth circle is your other life goals again due to shortage of time i will not be able to uh, uh, explain you it is well explained in the book but important thing is if you have interest in something and you are talented in something that can also be a basis for selecting 
your long-term yeah. professional goals, right? Very, very, very important. So all of these people on, whose name is written on the right side, Narayan Murthy, Rahul Dravid, and, and I myself, have also used this diagram to select our long-term professional goals, right? Um, for example, for me, right? I was, uh, I was very interested in engineering and I was very skilled also in uh, maths and science and physics and chemistry. And based on those, I built my long-term career in engineering. I was able to select engineering as a career in probably grade six or so. So uh, it doesn't matter where, what grade you are in, you can use this method to also select your uh, professional goals, which then helps you uh, decide your educational goals, right? Number three is aptitude test. If you can't figure out from, by, by these two methods, you can do an aptitude test. Your teachers can guide you. And through that, you can figure out uh, essentially which, which areas uh, you are uh, well suited for. I think that is also a very good method for you to select uh, a career. If it is still not clear, and all of this is described in the book, so please read the book thoroughly. If it is still not clear, go with the subjects you love and build a career in which is aligned to those subjects. For example, let's say you like biology. Um, and then you, maybe medicine or the uh, doctorate, doctor career is, uh, is good for you. If you like maths and science, maybe engineering. If you like finance, maybe economics and uh, other things. So, so then you can go ahead with the subjects you like and then build your career accordingly. So these are the three, three methods that have worked. I think teachers can take this notice as well. This is how they can help students at a very young age pick a career and then pick the education that will help them get. So that is very important. Why is this? Okay, yeah. All right. So that is how you select your long-term career and then obviously educational goals. The Then the second part of the sentence comes in, which I said, define who you aspire to be and now become that person. When Dhoni decided to play cricket for India, it was not that he just sat there and only wished. He worked hard on a number of things. He, he, he was very passionate. He achieved excellence in, in playing cricket, in fitness, and a lot of things. And that is when he became who he became, right? So in the book, I have described four pillars, passion, excellence, innovation, and leadership that you need to excel in to become the best version of yourself. Now, do you have to wait to develop these skills? The answer is no. Even as a student, you can develop these skills. So all of these are chapters in the book. I will ask you to read. I will ask even teachers to read this. But I'm going to briefly talk about each one of them to get some ideas in your mind. I don't know why it keeps squeezing. OK. First is passion. Right? All the successful people I have worked with across the world, they are very passionate about their goals. Very passionate about their goals. What is passion? Passion is your desire to get to your, uh, your goals in, without, uh, uh, with any diff amount of difficulty. You are so passionate to achieve that, that you, can, you are ready to work hard. You are ready. Uh, uh, you are ready to go through ups and downs and achieve those goals. So passion is a chapter in the book. I would like you to read that. Um, uh, it's a very powerful force. Uh, and in a simple way, if I have to describe, uh, it is that your brain is actually can be divided in a very simple way in two parts. One that works on logic and the one that works on emotion. We are all trained to use the logical part of the brain. We are not actually uh, trained to use the emotional part of the brain. But the emotional part does not understand logic. 
So logically, you cannot charge that part of the brain by saying that, please help me. What it can be charged with is an emotion and that emotion is passion. So please read the chapter of passion. It is very powerful workforce and all the successful people in the world have created passion and through that passion, they have been able to charge the other side of the brain and the whole brain starts helping them in achieving their goals. And that is when it becomes Aham Brahmasmi. The whole, whole universe supports you to become successful. So please do read this chapter on passion and you will learn the science behind passion and how it works and how you can inculcate passion about your goals. The second pillar is excellence, right? All the people you know and read about, they have achieved excellence in their areas. Amitabh Bachchan, uh, Narayan Murthy, Rahul Dravid, Virat Kohli, uh, any of these people have achieved excellence. So if you want to realize your full potential, become the best version of yourself, you need to develop excellence in your area of interest and the areas you are good at. How do you do that? Students can do that. You can read about it, take special courses. You can read books about the areas that you like. You can do science projects. You can do hackathons. You can uh, participate in sport, debate, drama, music. So many things you can do to actually develop excellence in the area that you are good at and the area that you like. Again, there is a chapter on excellence in the book. Please read that and develop and inculcate these. If you want to be phenomenally successful, this is a pillar that can help you become excellence, bring excellence in your life. The third pillar is innovation, thinking out of the box, right? Um, what does it mean? Again, read the chapter uh, to understand it, but it's ability to think different, right? You can start developing that even now by again, uh, participating in science projects or some other projects in your school. Uh, your school may have entrepreneurship cell. You can participate in that, especially the senior year students. But you can develop the skill of thinking out of the box, thinking differently, and that will help you become the best version of yourself. So please read the chapter and develop the ability to think different, think out of the box. And the fourth pillar and the last pillar is develop leadership skills, right? All these pictures that you see are of phenomenal leaders, right? How do you develop while you are a student? You can lead projects, you can lead teams, you can lead your sports team, you can lead your debate team, you can participate in business plan competition. So many things you can do from in, from in your school itself that will help you develop leadership skills and then you can continuously develop it. Uh, for many, many years. So you need four of these to become the best version of yourself. You have to be very passionate, but you can't be passionate without goals. So first, you need to capture your aspiration as goals, write them down, take the help of mentor to help you do that. And then you will be, your goal should be so that you are very passionate about them. And then you focus on developing leadership skill, excellence and thinking out of the box. You can do that from your school itself and that will help you tremendously. Uh, four, have four more gods in your life. So one god is obviously in all our lives, but there are four more gods who are willing to help you. But many of us never take their help. This is also a chapter in the book. Please read it. Um, these four gods are inspirers, people who inspire you. It could be Ratan Tata, it could be Virat Kohli, Mother Teresa, your teacher, your professor, um, Lakshmiji, uh, Rashmiji. Um, and many of these people can be, uh, can be people who you are inspired by. Learn from them. Role models are people who you would like to become, right? So role model is someone you want to become. If, if, for example, your role model is, let us say, um, uh, Dr. Devi Shetty, then you can become like him if you uh, do various things. And that is also described in this chapter. So all of us should have inspirers, role models, mentors. I already talked about it. And then books. Books are amazing mentors. And you should 
you should really take help from all these four gods because that will help you shape uh, say help you shape in amazing amazing way right so in the in the 12th chapter of the book i have uh, interviewed 11 people who have inspired me and these people have inspired millions in uh, in the world or in uh, our country from sachin tendulkar to narayan murthy to to uh, Ratan Tata, to Sadhguruji, to Dr. Kiran Majumdar, to Dr. Devi Shetty, John Chambers, Rahul Dravid, Vinita Bali, Vani Kola, so many other people. And the idea was that once you read, at least one or two of them will inspire you. And once you are inspired by them, you will actually hopefully learn one or two qualities from them that will shape you in amazing way. So read the chapter 12 as well. And Almost all of these interviews are also on my website. You can go and watch interview with Narayan Murthy, with Dr. Devi Shetty, so many other people. You will thoroughly enjoy and learn from them. These are not generic interviews. These are interviews about the content in the book, about the power of mentoring, about the power of goals, and you will enjoy and learn a lot from these. Right? Last and fifth. Give back in your own small way. Don't wait to give back when you grow up and you have lots of money and you have become successful. That is not necessarily the best idea. How can you give back? Well, a, a child in 10th grade can teach their maid's daughter for 30 minutes a week some subject. Not that difficult at all. Nobody is asking you to give money. Plant trees, take care of them. Volunteer in your school or some social organization. They always welcome help, right? Spend time with your grandparents. Give back in numerable ways, right? And let me share a story that Narayan Murthy shared with me in his interview. You can watch it uh, in his interview as well. So uh, Mr. Narayan Murthy uh, had eight or nine brothers and sisters. His father was a school teacher and mother was a homemaker. So 10, 11 people to be fed from the salary of a school teacher. Even in that situation, Narayan Murthy's mother invited one less fortunate child from their village to eat with them dinner every day. See, this is giving back. They themselves didn't have much at that time. But they shared whatever they could with uh, people who were even less, less fortunate than them. So that is, listen to that story um, by watching Narayan Murthy's interview. I'm sure this will inspire you. But now the important point is give back in your own small. When my children were growing and they were in your stage, um, whatever pocket money they got, they had to give part of their pocket money to blind school or some other place, right? They had to volunteer and so on. They celebrated their birthdays, first in blind school and then with their friends wherever they wanted. So um, suggestion to teachers is to encourage that and suggestion to students is to give back in your own small way. So these are the five things you can do as students to achieve amazing, amazing success. It's, it sometimes gets stuck, so give me a second. Don't know why. All right, so suggestion for teachers. Um, I hope lots of teachers are here. Um, become mentor to students. You are the first person for many students to actually take help as, as a mentor. Their parents may not be qualified, um, so, Teachers, please become mentors also. I know you are all very busy, but I think your five minutes can make a big difference to students. So please become mentors. Read my book to understand the process of mentoring. For every teacher, um, I think it's very important uh, to read the book. If you need more book, I'll uh, work with Rashmiji to uh, provide more books. But I think it's very important for teachers to read the book so they know what mentoring means. And it can help them as well. Although my focus today is students. Help students in thinking big. Don't, don't turn them down. When a child says, I want to be prime minister of India, 
don't say laugh at it don't uh, you never know right so i think helping them is very important and obviously uh, the way i have described capturing the goals and and so on uh, help them create goals make them write essays about people who inspired them their role models they write essays about uh, about many things they may write maybe writing essay about gandhi and so on but they are not going to become gandhi so it's as important as essay on gandhi is it is also equally important that you you make them select one or two people who uh, inspire them ask them to write essays on them uh, let them do the research by them uh, themselves and obviously ask them what can they learn from these people and how they can adopt some of those values right so that is how you can help them grow with the right values uh, point them to relevant books and ask them to present it to the class i think reading the book reading books is very very important skill uh, uh, which is uh, to be taught and encouraged by teachers um help them excel in their favorite courses so if somebody is very good at math encourage them to participate in math olympiad or whatever other competition they have so definitely and encourage them to develop excellence in the area they are good at and the area they uh, like for students what are the next steps students create career goals i have described three methods to you already work with your teacher and or some mentor uh, to decide your career goals if the career goal is to be a doctor that obviously changes your educational goals right and the college you would like to go to so capture all that as, as goals write an essay on your life if all your wishes become true all right this uh, this i am giving this uh, homework to all the children that are listening and even one who are not listening imagine big think big and write an essay as if all your wishes become true all students should do that create a vision board for your goals you can see the picture on the right hand side i think teachers can help there again create a board with all your goals what you want to do in various areas not just just the professional area or educational area but as the, it is described in the book in many other areas you may want to play a sport from your college or state or for country you may want to uh, be uh, you may enjoy debate and you can write your debate goals etc etc so i think um, teachers can again help here to help students create vision boards if you still not uh, clear about vision board go to internet and read about vision board and you will uh, get help right create the steps you need to take to get your to your choice of college and and area of study you need good grades you need competitive exam scores extra curricular activities whatever you need create them as goals if you are ninth grade what is the your goal for 10th grade if you are in 11th grade what is your grade, uh, goals for grade 12 so students have to do these things and then uh, select two people who inspire you research yourself figure out who these people are and read their books or uh, read about them and then write uh, essays about them and uh, one or two qualities that you will adopt right select a role model write about them read about them talk to other students or in your class about them create a list of five books that you would like to read in the next year or two and read them and present it to your class if possible do activities that help you develop excellence thinking out of the box and leadership skills over rest of your college years and again each one of these are chapters in the book so you can get more guidance from the book um on chapter 13 of the book the, uh, what do mentees have to say so i've mentored uh, hundreds and thousands of people across and there are about 20 people who have shared their experience how mentoring has changed their life and these are shared in chapter 13 uh, there are students there there are professionals there you pick who you are like and what stage of life you are in and read about them and see how impactful mentoring is and that will inspire you to put mentoring as one of your 
uh, goals, right? Let me tell you a story of Anand, who, who's my elder son. Um, when he was in sixth grade, uh, we created the exercise that I'm asking you to do, which is um, what would he like to be if there were no constraints, right? And his selection, even in sixth grade, was that he wanted to work in finance and he wanted to work in stocks, even at that stage, right? So we said, perfectly fine. If that is what you want to do, then which colleges do you want to go to? Write down the names of those colleges. And he wrote down the five colleges that he wanted to go to. In sixth grade, um, they, one of those colleges was also University of California, Berkeley, where he ultimately uh, got admission. But he wrote down five colleges. Then for, to, to prepare for those five colleges, what do you need to do? You need good grades, you need good SAT scores, you need good uh, extracurricular activities, you need to give back to certain uh, nonprofit or social organization, etc. He wrote down and created goals in all of those areas. And over the next six years, he worked on them, achieved most of them, and got admission at University of California, Berkeley, and studied there for his undergrad, right? Similar stories are there, uh, which will inspire you, and then you can follow this path. So in, in closing, um, my book is a mentor. Use it, read it again and again. We just did an impact study uh, for some students, college students, and the results are mind boggling. How much students have gained from the book. So please take it seriously. Teachers also, please take it seriously. Uh, read, read the book, benefit yourself as well as all your students. Um, you can join me on social media if you are on social media. And I wish you lots and lots of luck, but take this very seriously. This may make you 100 times more successful than without this help. God bless you. Thank you so much. Let me stop. Thank you very much, sir. I hope you're able to hear me. Yes, I can. That was fantastic. We are really energized with today's session. It was really mesmerizing. And as a moderator, it is my privilege to ask you the first question with your kind permission, sir. Of course. So, sir, uh, my initial question is that we have heard wonderful talk by you today, along with reading your book and many other motivational speakers. When we read these books, we feel really energized, just like we are feeling right now. But what happens is the sustainability, sustainability of motivation. How do we address this challenge of sustainability in the sector of motivation, sir? How do we keep this on? The fire. Excellent, excellent, excellent question. So first of all, uh, let me tell you that I do not know anyone who hasn't failed many times in life before achieving success. So failure is not opposite of success. Failure is part of success. So failure should not keep you down. You should learn from your failures and move on, right? Now, two, three points here. So in the book, I have written my, uh, you know, my failures also. I have failed many, many times. And so, for example, relevant to you, um, uh, when I gave my IIT entrance exam, um, the paper was in English. Um, I, I did, couldn't understand half the questions, right? So I was disappointed, but then I made, uh, made it to NIT and I said, okay, I want to graduate at the top of the class. I was gold medalist there. So you can always, you will fail, you learn from it and do things that can help you overcome these. There are many other failures I have described in my book where I have failed. Now, what gives you energy to go on and on and on and not get discouraged by um, your failures? Uh, that is your question, Ankit, and that is passion about your goals. All the people who are successful are very passionate. That's why I read the chapter on passion and be passionate about your goals and treat your failures as, um, 
as uh, places where you can learn something and then move on. And uh, all the people, there's a uh, chapter, uh, it, there's an interview of Rahul Dravid, for example, in my book that you should read. Um, when he was dropped from the team of one day cricket, I'm giving you cricket example, hoping that most of you like cricket, but uh, he was dropped from the team of uh, one day cricket and he was shocked. Rahul uh, Dravid getting dropped, and uh, but he worked very hard. And he, within a year, he came back to the one day team and scored 10,000 runs. Right? Many other stories you will see from um, the interviews that people have failed and they have learned the lessons and they have moved on and on to bigger and bigger goals and bigger and bigger success. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. So passion is the answer. Thank you for Thank that. You. Now yeah. I'll request Ayush from our Vidya School in Gurugram to ask the question. Ayush, you can unmute yourself. Good morning, sir. I'm Ayush from grade 11. I'm studying in Vidya School Gurugram. And I would like to ask, in chapter 1, the importance of personal inspirations are given. But how can one balance their goals with the change of flexibility in this rapidly changing world? Yeah, very good. Very good question, Ayush. Um, uh, my younger son's name is also Ayush. Um, now, the question is, um, in this changing world, so first of all, uh, capture your aspirations at this point, wherever, in whatever stage you are, you are in 11th grade. So based on 11th grade, capture your aspirations, which are about generally about um, your education related. But my strong suggestion is before you su select educational goals, uh, select the professional goals first, because that decides what you want to want to study. Right. So for you at this point, those should be the goals that you, uh, you select um, and uh, then go after them with a lot of lot of passion. Right. Can you change your goals? Well, let me continue the, with the story of my son that I talked about earlier. So Anand, my older son, he wanted to work in the stock market and he wanted to study finance. He did. He went to University of California, Berkeley. After that, he started working in New York in the stock market area. But after two years, he did not like that. So here comes your, your question. Can you change your goals? The answer is yes. Then he said, okay, this is not where I want to spend all my life. I want to work in a technology company at the uh, crossroads of technology and finance. He made that as a goal. He did MBA from uh, University of Michigan. And now he's working for Amazon at the cross-section of finance and technology. So can you change your goals? Yes, but at any one point, you should know what your goals are. If you don't decide your goals at all, with the fear of, uh, I don't know what I want. I don't know when I will decide. I can decide it two years later. That is a mistake. So at any one point, you should create your goals. You can change it if necessary. Now we'll go to Bangalore. Uh, may I request Esther from Bangalore to ask your question, please? Good morning, sir. My name is Esther. I am studying 10th and I was, I am a student of Vidya. My question is, how do you advise the youth of today to deal with setbacks and failures in their career or in their lives? And what mindset should they adopt to stay resilient and not lose their way? Yeah, yeah. Good question. Uh, follow on to Ankit's question before. Uh, as I said, uh, failures are part of game. Uh, all the successful people, if you read about them, and that is exactly why I said you read few books about the people who inspire you, you will realize that failure is part of success, not opposite of success. And how these people who you admire have dealt with failures, and that will help you tremendously. But uh, as I said earlier, I'll repeat myself, that uh, if you are passionate about your goal, Nobody can stop you, right? If you have uh, seen the movie Dhoni, if you have not seen it, see, please, see what he had to go through to become a cricket player in Indian team. If you have not seen the movie 12th Fail, please see it. 
see how much failure he had to see before he achieved his goal so failure is part of the game uh, learn from it be passionate about your goals and work very very hard to achieve those goals uh, take whatever help you can from your mentors from my book from your teachers and other mentors and if you are committed to it if you are truly passionate about it the whole universe will help you achieve your goal and you will be amazingly successful thank you so much sir. continuing with the bangalore itself may i request lavanya to ask your question please uh, good morning sir good morning yeah like as you mentioned before as passion plays a very important role in one's life like what advice would you give to the youth who are still figuring out their passion uh, so can you repeat the question please if there is a I resonance so i couldn't hear it okay so as you mentioned earlier passion plays a very important role in one's life so what what advice would you give to the youth who are still trying to figure out it and the career yeah. path okay 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 so i think i think the the uh, the three methods i shared those are the methods one has to use to select the career they want to go after um all the things i covered right and write an essay about yourself assuming all your wishes are granted all those things will help you create passion passion is absolutely the key so first having the goal you cannot be passionate without goal you cannot be going very fast somewhere you have to have a goal where you want to reach right so i think it's important to have a have a goal and then be very very passionate and passion will help you ride uh, ups and downs uh, learn from other people uh, who you admire how they dealt with success learn from them have a mentor who can guide you when you see a failure um, uh, mentor can hold your hand the book will describe many many cases of people who have failed many times and then they have succeeded so all of this will help you uh, achieve your goals and deal with success and demotivation as ankit asked before thank you sir now we'll go to west zone uh, may i request rashidu from vidya west zone who is at our dp digital skill center in mumbai to ask your question please good morning sir here yeah, rashidu from vidya west zone mumbai i am recently graduated from bigbox cyber security and forensic so uh, first of all thank you for sharing your valuable insights achieving meaningful success your experience and wisdom and true inspiring so sir i have a question regarding challenges you have encountered so what are the challenges you faced in your career and how did you overcome them thank you thank you that's a that's a very good question and again the my whole journey is described in chapter 1 of the book and the reason i describe my journey is to showcase to each one of you that a hindi school boy a small city boy uh, if you are following the process and determined to achieve success nobody can can stop you right but challenges come when you have big goals if you want to jump 2 feet high you can easily jump if you the challenge comes when you say i want to jump 6 feet right so when you have big goals challenges come and they came for me also like i said my goal was to go to iit for my engineering but i i failed i couldn't uh, enter because the paper was in english and i couldn't couldn't answer i couldn't understand many questions so there was a failure but then there was another college iit which is uh, may not be as good but fairly close and i said okay uh, i want to uh, get gold medal there i want to graduate at the top of the class and i did worked hard to do that similarly when i made uh, made uh, the goal that i wanted to be number 1 in my field in the world now that's not a small goal right so obviously you will have to work very very hard and i think that is what i did so i, I again it is described in the book i said who is number 1 right now there was a professor at university of uh, minnesota a uh, professor aviram barkohen he was number 1 i made him my inspiration i learned from him i read anything about him i read all his papers technical papers research and everything and then uh, then he became my role model and then he became my mentor after a while. and he guided me to number one spot in right 
United States for my area uh, of uh, research. So all, and these were again and again, the goals were there. Then um, when I left everything in US to come back to India, because my mother and my parents needed help, um, that's not an easy challenge because I had two, uh, two children who were in eighth grade and fifth grade. We, we, are, we were living happily in, uh, in Silicon Valley of California, uh, but that was a challenge to move to India. But again, if you are passionate, if you care about the goals, and my goal was to take care of parents, then you can achieve whatever you want. We came back, we took care of parents and, and so on. So that is why I have written my story in chapter one, because it will also tell you um, challenges come, you can win over challenges. Sometimes you will fail. Like I said, learn from that and move on. Good question. Thank you, sir. And now I request Ruchit from Vidya School Gurugram to ask your question. Ruchit, are you there? Maybe on mute. Good morning, sir. My name is Rachit Rai and currently I am studying in class 10th in Vidya school. My question is, there is main role of mentors in achieving success. So what can we do to choose right mentor? Yeah, it is a good question, by the way, because this Thanks. whole focus is on, uh, on mentoring. So I think... Um, number of things you can do. It is described in the chapter of four gods, which I described briefly here on how, who are mentors, what do they do, how do you select them. All of that is there, but I'll summarize it for you. For you at this stage, you are in 10th grade. Um, probably the best mentors, face-to-face -face mentors are your teachers, maybe some family member and so on. Make sure that person knows what they are talking about. So don't take advice from people who don't know um, uh, the areas that you are interested in. So many times I have seen students take help and advice from fellow students. But here is blind leading blind. Uh, the, the other student who you are listening to may not know much more than you. So go to person who actually has knowledge and experience, ideally. Your teachers are very good resource. Your family member could be a good resource. And then take the help from my book because the person you may have access to may not know the structured process of mentoring. So they are willing to help you. They are willing to give you time, but they may not know how to help you. And that is why I was asking all teachers to read the book. And book will tell you how to, in a structured process you first define your goals and then become worthy of achieving them. And so that is what you do. And uh, read the chapter on, on four gods that you need. It describes how do you select a mentor and so on. But at this point, given that you are in 10th grade, your best bet is family members or some senior students or teachers or someone like that. And the book, read, read, read the book again and again, and this will help you. Good question. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Now, uh, we have got one live question as well, sir. Uh, someone named Harish has joined in. So I'll request Harish to unmute yourself, turn on your camera. Uh, please tell us which city you're joining us from and then ask your question to sir. Uh, hello, can you all hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you, doctor, for giving this talk. I am Harish. I'm now joining from Sunnyvale in the US. Um, I had a different kind of a question to ask you, uh, but maybe applicable and maybe your book already answers it. I haven't read your book, but I could just get an idea from you telling about goals, aspirations, etc. Thank you for that. Uh, but probably my question is somebody along their career line will probably have this question. Uh, so first, let me give a small intro about myself because you may not know about me. Uh, of course, many of you may not know about me too. So I got this link from my in-laws and in others Vista. Uh, right now, I'm in the U.S., and uh, I'm originally from Bangalore. I studied computer science engineering there. 
I came to the US after getting an admission to an Ivy League college and worked in a couple of software companies, now working in Uber as a software engineer. Um, and I also faced an accident recently, last year, September 17, 2023, which would have killed me, but I survived that also. <laughs> Uh, I'm just not sure why I survived, but yeah, it should have killed me. Uh, so my question to you, to you is, what exactly would you call success? Is it the money one person makes? Is it the location they live in? Is it helping other people? Or is it in being happy with the daily job that they're doing? Or is it something else? What exactly would you call a success? Yeah. In my case, it could be being alive too. <laughs> yeah, thank you, doctor. Please go good, ahead. Good, good, good question. Um, thanks for joining from Sunnyvale. It is actually very deep in there right now. Um, but uh, first of all, the answer to your question is the whole book is answer to your question. Okay, that's why it is called achieving meaningful success, not just success. And the crux of that is that we need to have multidimensional goals uh, in all the areas that you described, professional success, material success, um, education-related success, spirituality-related success, uh, health-related success, uh, giving back-related success. So all of these areas are important to a person. And if they select their goals in all of these areas and balance uh, sort of all the goals as and when it's appropriate and achieve all of these goals, they truly achieve meaningful success. So uh, read the chapter two of the book. It covers it in detail with lots and lots of examples. And I'm sure you will benefit. It's, an, it's a wonderful question because many people think that only professional success or getting a lot of money is success. Well, you will be reading about two studies there, one at Harvard and, um, and other in US where seemingly very successful people, the CEOs of, um, of various companies when interviewed after retirement said that they don't think they were successful. They were very disappointed with their lives. And the primary reason was they didn't have balanced goals in various parts of their life, various aspects of their life. So meaningful success is when you, it's your life, so you decide what is important to you, but have multidimensional goals and work with equal focus to achieve all of them. And that is what meaningful success is. That is what helps you lead a life without regrets and makes you happy. Read the book for sure. The book is answer to your question. Okay. Thank you, doctor. Thank you for that uh, wonderful answer, sir. Uh, we just have more, two more minutes and we have this wonderful staff from our West uh, South Zone, Nandini, who has a question for you, sir. Nandini, very quickly. Thank you, Ankit. Uh, first, I would like to congratulate Dr. Man Singh for the wonderful book he had given, he had written and given to the our beneficiaries. Uh, so during the vacation time, I had the opportunity to read the book, the book cover to cover. It was extremely motivating, motivating as you mentioned that it is a very good book for the for both the mentors and, and the mentees. So I have a question to you, doctor, today. How from the Vidya point of view, I I would like to ask us like uh, how to uh, motivate the Vidya alumni to be a part of the mentorship program to the current with their beneficiaries with their beneficiaries because they need to give back their beneficiaries because they need to give back and what they have learned from vidya they need to give it back to the students so this would uh, your answer would definitely be helpful yeah excellent excellent question uh, this is a question only a teacher can ask so first of all thank you for reading the book Number thank two, you, appreciating the book. And third, um, caring about uh, your students to provide them mentor. Like I have said, senior students can be tremendous mentors. And, um, and I think all of them should really contribute by mentoring one or two, uh, two children at least, right? I described to you in 30 seconds one program I had at Dell uh, when I was head of Dell we will bring the students from local uh, schools, generally, which had less fortunate students, and they will uh, work with engineer for that day. Each, each child will work with one of my engineers all day. 
uh, they will eat with them, they will uh, work with them. And, uh, and uh, by the end of the day, these children were, had evolved into somebody completely different. I would talk to them in the morning when they came and I would talk to them when they left and they were different people. This is how powerful association with a senior and mentoring can be. So, so how do you make that happen? Well, this is a challenge that uh, I think Rashmi can help. Uh, uh, I'm happy to talk to your, uh, your uh, senior students as well that look, you owe it back to the school and you can give back and this doesn't cost any money and now with with the streaming video and all that they don't even have to drive they don't have to come they can actually mentor people from anywhere so i think rashmi ji take this as a challenge um, i'm happy to participate uh, and make sure that i can encourage these people to give back and help their fellow students who are uh, who are seeking help as a as a mentee that would be really wonderful, sir. Thanks for your prompt and immediate response for that. Thank you. Thank you. We'll take us on, Vivekji. Thank you so much. I, I was going to ask you if you can continue to mentor and we can do it on a virtual platform. We create a group and we would love you to mentor senior teachers, senior alumni and guide us in how to be better mentors. I think that will be a wonderful way that we can continue our wonderful relationship after this lovely webinar with that work that'd be wonderful yeah uh, i think i think your your uh, voice was cracking but i could get the gist of the of the question um so uh, my answer to that rashmi ji is the book is my answer whatever i know it is in the book i will encourage people to read the book again and again um i cannot i don't have time for uh, you know, mentoring face to face or individuals and things like that. I'm happy to give a talk to large number of people if they can benefit. But honestly, I'll tell you, all your answers are in the book. Yes. Right. If you read that and don't read it once, I have said that in, in the beginning itself, read it two times. And many people have come back. Now the book has been out for a year, year and a half. Many people have come back. They have read it six times, seven times. And they have said that every time I learn something new. So my suggestion is that uh, don't underestimate the book. Uh, take, take help from the book. Uh, watch those interviews that I'm talking about. And if there are some specific questions that are coming up, uh, I'm happy to answer a uh, few of them by email. Yes. Uh, you can also go to my website, which is, uh, which is uh, in, the address is given on my book. Yeah. And people can submit their questions there. And one of my mentees will answer those questions. And if necessary, necessary, I will also answer those questions. Yes. So Thank you multiple so ways I can help. Thank you. Thank you. Over to you, Yankin. Thank you so much, Vivek Ji, uh, for today's session. Uh, as it is heard, it, as it is said that uh, leaders are born, but leadership can be cultivated is what we take it back. So multiple leaders will come out after this session and people, all the students who have read the book and are going to read the book. We really need more than 200 books for sure. So I'm sure Rashmi is going to reach out to you for more copies of the book. So with this, uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, gratitude, Dhanyavadam from all of us at Vidya family. And we really hope that we continue this engagement with you so that we have more and more Vidya leaders under your leadership and under your guidance coming up. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Jai Hind and Namaste. Thank you so much. And I can meet your request on more books. So I can work with Rashmi ji and provide a few more books. And uh, I, I ask teachers to take a big role in this. As I said, I have multiple suggestions for teachers. Uh, Rashmi ji, I'm, uh, I'm counting on you to sort of make sure teachers buy this and and they themselves will get a lot of benefit so enjoy talking to you enjoyed seeing so many smiling faces and guys go and make a difference to your life and to the country i think there is nothing like it god bless you all